The Battle of the Bulge was one of the bloodiest campaigns fought by the United States in the Second World War. As many as 600,000 Americans took part in the battle, along with over 50,000 British, Canadian and other Allied soldiers. Thanks in part to its scale and its setting in the frozen forests of Western Europe, the campaign has gained an enduring place in popular culture. Since the end of the Second World War, books, films and television series have given the average person a glimpse into how the Battle of the Bulge was conducted at a strategic level, in addition to how the average infantryman on the ground coped with their ordeal. These works were greatly aided by the first-hand accounts of those who fought in the Ardennes. However, it's fair to say that the overall narrative of the campaign has been shaped more and more by these works of popular culture. There is a reason why the Siege of Bastogne is perhaps the most famous single event during the Battle of the Bulge, while the equally critical battles on the Elsenborn Ridge are relatively unknown. This video is intended to show how popular culture influenced the narrative of the Battle of the Bulge, and how certain aspects of the history can be minimised or changed by products which ultimately serve as entertainment. The story of the Battle of the Bulge was being written as the Allies continued to engage in heavy fighting with German forces in the Ardennes. War correspondents, mostly from the United States, flocked to the threatened sector to report on the outnumbered American GIs and their desperate struggle against Germany's last great Western offensive. Martha Gellhorn, one of the most famous correspondents of the 20th century and wife of Ernest Hemingway, was in Italy when the attack started and hitchhiked her way to the Ardennes front in order to cover the battle. She wrote, A colleague and I drove up to Bastogne on a secondary road through breathtaking scenery. The Thunderbolts had created this scenery. You can say the words death and destruction, and they don't mean anything. But they are awful words when you are looking at what they mean. Over time, the story of the Siege of Bastogne became the focal point for most histories of the Battle of the Bulge. There are several reasons for this. The first being that before the offensive, Bastogne was a quiet crossroads town behind the front line. Therefore, it became a popular place for war correspondents to relax in a supposed quiet sector of the front. When the German offensive approached the town, these war reporters were on hand to document the unfolding battle. Most fled as the enemy forces approached the town, but after Bastogne was encircled, the dispatches from the front captured the imagination of the American public. One reporter who stayed was correspondent Fred McKenzie of the Buffalo Evening News, out of New York. McKenzie had never been in a combat zone before, and went to interview an officer in the 101st Airborne for a local story when the division was ordered to Bastogne. He tagged along and reported on the paratrooper division for the entire siege, providing dispatches from inside the pocket. He was present for Brigadier General Anthony McAuliffe's utterance of nuts when asked to surrender by the local German commander. By being in the right place at the right time, Mackenzie managed to give one of the most comprehensive accounts of the siege of Bastogne. His reporting, along with many others, greatly influenced the post-war narrative surrounding the Battle of the Bulge. Meanwhile, the legend of Bastogne grew outside the pocket. General McAuliffe's defiant refusal when asked to surrender by the local German commander enthralled those reading. Reporters described General George Patton's counterattack to break the siege in breathless terms. When the 101st was relieved, the paratroopers found that they were now the biggest heroes in the country. As Stephen Ambrose wrote in his book Band of Brothers, the battle made the 101st into legend. The legend that began in Normandy and grew in Holland reached its climax in Bastogne. The 101st Airborne was the most famous and admired of all the 89 divisions the United States Army put into the Second World War. Thanks to the deluge of reporting from the front, the defence of Bastogne eclipsed all other aspects of the Battle of the Bulge in the minds of the American public. While the desperate defence of the key crossroads town was important to the eventual Allied victory, it also overshadowed other key engagements which were important in the campaign. The town of San Vite was 30 miles to the north, and saw just as heavy fighting, where a scratch team of American units held off the 6th Panzer Army for almost a week. However, there were no war correspondents relaxing in San Vite before the battle, and none were on hand to document the struggle. Bloody fighting on the Elsenborn Ridge saw mostly untested American GIs decisively defeat the 6th Panzer Army, 
an action that essentially won the Battle of the Bulge in its early days. It would take another 24 years for the story of Lyle Book's tiny reconnaissance patrol of 22 men holding up an entire SS Panzer Division to be told. Many of these stories would later receive the recognition they deserved, thanks in part to veterans who spoke up about their experiences. Historians who dug deeper into the massive battle found former GIs who were more than willing to help correct the narrative of the campaign. As one example, Book and his men were fittingly interviewed by historian John Eisenhower, the son of the former Supreme Allied Commander and US President Dwight Eisenhower. His book, The Bitter Woods, was well received by historians and veterans alike, and finally brought Book's men into the public consciousness. Thanks in part to the younger Eisenhower's efforts, Book and his men would later receive the Presidential Unit Citation. However, these compelling stories were and continue to be overshadowed by the 101st Airborne Division at Bastogne. To understand why, it's important to fill in the gaps between the conclusion of the campaign when Bastogne was dominating the narrative and the present day. After World War II ended, a litany of accounts flooded into bookstores. Captain Robert E. Merriam, who fought in the Ardennes with the 28th Infantry Division, published what is considered the first official history of the battle, Dark December, in 1947. Merriam's book was praised for being an all-encompassing account of the campaign and became a bestseller, resulting in other officers adding to the historical record. Even a movie, Battleground, was released in 1949, which won two Academy Awards and was praised for its delicate handling of the subject matter. Although it featured fictionalised characters from the 101st Airborne in Bastogne, it was written and directed by veterans of the battle, who understood the importance of getting the basic facts right. Some historians took years to meticulously formulate their accounts of the battle. Hugh Cole was a historian with Patton's Third Army, and carefully crafted a comprehensive history for the Office of the Chief of Military History, a division of the US Army. Cole's book, the Ardennes, Battle of the Bulge, continues to be one of the most cited accounts of the campaign, and has been a major source for both the Intel Report and the Operations Room. Unfortunately, Cole's exhausted work was released in 1965, and immediately overshadowed by Hollywood's second take on the subject matter, the film Battle of the Bulge. The big-budget blockbuster was directed by Ken Anakin, who had earlier been involved with The Longest Day, an account of D-Day which remains one of the most historically accurate films about the Second World War. Regrettably, Anakin's Battle of the Bulge proved to be the exact opposite, and it is clear the film has no basis in reality. The list of historical inaccuracies is too long for this video, but several mistakes stand above the rest and deserve special attention. The movie was filmed on the flat countryside of Spain in pleasant weather, conditions which in no way represented the actual Battle of the Bulge. None of the historical figures associated with the campaign from either side are in the film, as every character is heavily fictionalised. The movie also rewrites the history of the battle in which every German tank is a King Tiger, and Patton's Third Army never relieves Bastogne. Perhaps most shockingly, the film ends with the German advance defeated by American soldiers rolling flaming petrol drums down a hill to explode the enemy panzers. The real turning point of winter weather clearing to allow Allied air power to dominate the skies is never portrayed, much less mentioned. Professor Peter Caddick Adams wrote in his own excellent account of the battle, Snow and Steel, The movie represented a low point in post-Second World War cinematography. The worst of the large-scale war epics remains the critics' collective view. The American magazine Saturday Review was scathing in their review accusing the screenwriters of going out of their way to avoid historical fact. Veterans of the battle were furious at the film, including Dwight Eisenhower himself. The retired Eisenhower had been content living away from the public eye, but was so incensed by the movie's blatant disregard of history that he made a rare public appearance to denounce the film as fiction. His son John was perhaps motivated by his father's remarks, and spent the next four years writing his own book about the battle, which became The Bitter Woods. However, the damage had been done, and a full generation of Americans were exposed to a work of fiction trying to pass itself off as history. For almost 40 years, 
This unfortunate movie was the only depiction of the Battle of the Bulge, which penetrated into popular culture. The depiction of German tanks as invincible King Tigers certainly influenced the layman's view on tank design during the Second World War. It would take until 2001 for one of America's bloodiest campaigns to be shown on the screens again, this time in the form of a TV miniseries. On the 9th of September 2001, a 10 episode adaptation of Ambrose's Band of Brothers was released by HBO. Two of the episodes follow Easy Company of the 506th Parachute Infantry Regiment 101st Airborne as they fight in the Battle of the Bulge. Unlike the 1965 movie, the miniseries was praised for its attention to detail and accuracy, all the way down to uniforms, weapons and locations. One of the best pieces of war film ever made, Band of Brothers centred on the paratroopers' experience in Bastogne over the rest of the battle. The series obviously deserves special commendation, but Band of Brothers still unintentionally gives audiences unfamiliar with the battle the impression that most of the hard fighting took place at Bastogne, rather than across the whole front. Video games have also portrayed the Battle of the Bulge, sometimes with reasonable accuracy. Strategy games such as Close Combat Battle of the Bulge and Panzer Campaigns were among the first to translate the battle into video games. Larger first-person shooter franchises such as Call of Duty and Medal of Honor then put the player in the shoes of someone actually fighting on the ground. Most involve defending the Bastogne pocket, but there are games where the player can fight on the wider front. In Medal of Honor European Assault, there is a mission to take part in the Battle of Rockerath Krinkelt, an overlooked part of the campaign. While none of these are particularly historically accurate, the majority of them at least portray the winter conditions and hilly terrain of the Ardennes correctly, and bring the history to a wider, younger audience. Although the Battle of the Bulge is one of the most famous military campaigns in American history, as well as the history of the Second World War, it is continually misunderstood thanks in part to popular culture. In many ways, the narrative of the battle was written as the fighting was going on, and 77 years of books, movies and video games have not changed the story of the campaign. Today, the Siege of Bastogne continues to be the most well-known event of the battle, but equally, important aspects of the fighting in the Ardennes are slowly being recognised more by the general public. There is work to be done here, especially with regards to the role of air power during the campaign, as well as the contributions from America's allies. The chronology of the battle also deserves more attention, especially the second half of the campaign, which saw American, British, Canadian, Belgian, French and Polish servicemen push back the German-held bulge in bloody fighting. The Intel Report, along with our sister channel The Operations Room, will continue to try to bring attention to these lesser-known battles in order to give those who served the proper recognition they deserve.